Two years ago, I had no idea what a corgi was, let alone a Pembroke Welsh corgi. My wife was asking for a dog, so we ended up looking online and finding an ad that this lady was selling her corgi puppies on eBay of all places. So we ended up getting a girl corgi puppy. Immediately fell in love with her, so six months later, we got a boy corgi puppy. Their names are Mila and Sloan. Today, we're gonna to discuss the history of Pembroke Welsh Corgis and where they come from. Next will be their personal traits, and then third, we're gonna talk about their physical features. Much of the information I'm gonna share with you today comes from the Pembroke Welsh Corgi Club of America. That's pwcca.org, corgiguide.com, American Kennel Club, that's akc.org, and from personal experience from owning two corgis. Well-known fact about Pembroke Welsh Corgis is that they are the Queen of England's favorite dogs. She's owned 30 plus in her lifetime. And Mental Floss says that the Queen met her first Corgi when King George VI brought a male pooch home from a kennel in 1933 named Dookie. From that moment on, she knew she wanted more and more Corgis for the rest of her life. Speaking of England, Pembroke Welsh Corgis come from Pembrokeshire, Wales, which is a part of the United Kingdom as is England. There are actually two different types of Welsh Corgis. There's the Pembroke Welsh Corgi and the Cardigan Welsh Corgi. We'll talk about the differences between the two of them later on in the speech. Pembroke Welsh Corgis originally served as herding dogs for farmers and ranchers. The Corgis in Britain were also used as guardian dogs in the farmyard and helped collect domestic fowl. Mer Pembroke Welsh Corgi Club of America says that with poultry wandering freely around the farmyard, there was always a risk of them being taken by predators and the corgi could guard against this. PWCCA has also stated that the word corgi comes from the Welsh cor, which means dwarf, and C, which means dog, the C becoming a gi by mutilation resulting in corgi. There is a Welsh legend that says that at night, the corgis would go off and play with the fairies, and the fairies would ride the corgis as steeds into battle. According to the legend, the markings on a corgi's coat suggest the faint outline of a saddle and harness where the fairies would ride them. Like the legend says about corgis playing with fairies, playfulness is a very common personality trait in corgis. They're also very outgoing, friendly, and in many cases very protective. Personally, my corgis are very friendly and playful with our immediate family in our own home. But as soon as someone else comes in, my boy cor corgi especially gets extremely protective of all of our, of all of our family. Cor Pembroke Welsh corgis do not like it when someone or something that they don't know enters their home. It goes back to their herding days where they had to protect the cattle, sheep, chickens, etc. So they're extremely attentive when something's different around them. One trait some might say is a problem is that corgis are hit and miss with little kids. Pembroke Welsh corgis are naturally the herders, which makes them bossy dogs. So when children try chasing them around and herding them, they get mad and flip it around and herd them and bite at their ankles and try and get them into one area, which most people do not like when dogs bite their kids' ankles. They are very intelligent dogs and need daily stim mental stimulation, and without it, they can have excessive shedding and sometimes health issues. With our dogs, we like getting them little games they can play that they can get the treats out of. Pembroke Welsh Corgis can sometimes get separation anxiety from their owners if left alone too long. I've read on CorgiGuide.com and from personal experience, they can get destructive from their anxiety. They also get anxiety if everyone in the house is spread out. Like I said earlier, they will literally hurt us. They'll try and get us all to go in the same area so they know where everyone's at at all times. Our last point we're gonna discuss is their physical features. If you look anywhere on the internet or into any article, you're gonna see that Pembroke Welsh Corgi's butts are a very uh, popular trait within them. Their butts are easily the most popular physical trait about them. Another key physical attribute that everyone loves is how they have a medium sized dog body and small little legs. And as I said earlier, there are two different types of Welsh Corgis. There's a Pembroke Welsh Corgi, which this is what Sloan is, and a Cardigan Welsh Corgi. The differences between them are their ears 
Pembroke's ears are pointy, just like Sloan's, and Cardigan ears are more rounded. Another big uh, difference between the two of them is their tails. Clemson. Pembroke Walsh Corys get their, <clears throat> get their tails cut off at birth when cardigans usually keep their tails. Good boy, sir. <clears throat> According to the AKC, um, Pembroke Walsh Corys need their tails docked as short as possible without being indented for them to be AKC certified. Pembroke Walsh Corys can be red, sable, fawn, black, and tan. They can also be tricolored, which, as you saw, is Sloan. <clears throat> In conclusion, we've learned that Pembroke Walsh Corys are originally herding dogs. Next, we learn that they're playful, friendly, outgoing, and sometimes very protective. Then lastly, we learn that Corys may have big butts and small little legs, but they're still very athletic and very fast. So in the beginning of my speech, we also learned that Pembroke Walsh Corgis are the Queen of England's favorite dogs. They're also one of the most popular dogs in America nowadays. According to AKC.org's breed popularity, Pembroke Walsh Corgis rank number 18 of 194 recognized breeds. So hopefully, if you were looking into getting a Corgi, the information I've shared with you today has helped in making that decision.